The room smelled of iron and candle smoke, and everyone inside believed they were about to witness a death. It was 1818 in London, a city where medicine still relied on guesswork, superstition, and courage. Inside a modest room near Guy's hospital, a woman lay pale and fading, her life slipping away after childbirth. Doctors had tried everything they knew, and nothing worked. Blood had been lost. Hope was running out. And standing nearby was a physician about to challenge one of humanity's oldest fears, that mixing blood meant stealing a soul. James Blundell had seen too many women die this way. As an obstetrician, he watched life drain from patients while medicine stood helpless. But Blundell believed something radical, that blood itself was life, and that replacing it might pull someone back from the edge. It was a simple idea, and a terrifying one. No one truly understood blood types. Many believed transfusions caused madness or death. Previous experiments using animal blood had ended in disaster. Yet Blundell was convinced the answer lay in human-to-human -human transfusion. Same species, same essence, same chance. As the woman weakened, Blundell prepared his crude instruments, metal tubes, syringes, and bowls warm to prevent clotting. There were no IV lines, no sterilization, no guarantees. A donor was brought in, healthy but nervous, watching as his own blood was drawn into a vessel by candlelight. The room went quiet. Would the blood clot before it entered her body? Would her heart reject it? Would this desperate act hasten her death? Blundell worked quickly, transferring the blood drop by drop. Time stretched. Every breath felt counted. And then, something unexpected happened. Color returned to her face. Her pulse strengthened. The room, once heavy with dread, shifted into disbelief. She was still alive. Not cured. Not safe, but alive. That moment changed medicine forever. Blundell had done what centuries of doctors feared to attempt. He proved that blood could be shared and that life could be restored. Over the following years, he refined his methods, saving lives that would once have been written off as inevitable losses. Transfusion would later become safer, smarter, and routine. But in that room, it was raw, risky, and revolutionary. The first successful blood transfusion wasn't just a medical milestone. It was a turning point in how humanity understood the body, not as something sacred and untouchable, but as something that could be repaired. And it all began with a question whispered in the face of death. What if life could be passed from one human to another? If this story moved you, take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. And tell us in the comments, would you have dared to try when failure meant certain death?